Tonight, with the federal election looming, the candidates running for the seat of Grey talk water security in the regions. And federal funding promised for a uni hub in Port Lincoln, but a question mark remains over how much. From our seven Spencer Gulf studios, your nightly news with Madeline Kerr begins now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us this Wednesday. Continuing on with our election coverage, tonight we take a look at the topic of water security in the electorate of Grey. With the need for water ever growing, candidates have different ideas on how to bring the precious resource our way. Water security continues to be a hot topic in Grey as we head into the election weekend. You know, water's a, a, an absolute necessity. It's a requirement for life. With the region's farmers, companies and smaller rural communities crying out for more water. Independent candidate for Grey Liz Haberman says the current government isn't doing enough. The government's had many years to sort these things out and for some reason they just seem to have uh, pushed them aside and, and sort of thinking, oh, well, no one noticed. But the current member for Grey says they are making progress in assessing every possible water source. About water supply now... Uh, currently, I, I know uh, the former state government and uh, a couple of the big resources companies were looking at desalination. A desalination plant is said to not only bolster the amount of water available to the Spencer Gulf, but also to larger mining and manufacturing operations in the north of the state. The driver for that, of course, is the resources of the north and the fact that uh, we, uh, it's the time we say no more out the Great Artesian Basin. So. Uh, that, that, that'll all have some way to go, but it's under discussion and consideration. Instead of looking to the ocean for water, the Greens party is looking to the Murray River. We argue that uh, South Australia uh, is um, entitled to a, uh, a higher allocation of, of water from the Murray. The, uh, the eastern states uh, continue to um, not play uh, the game fairly. Tim White says the Greens have been pursuing the issue in federal parliament and that he can help bring water our way. There would be a, um, a more secure allocation for, um, for the Iron Triangle. Although coming from opposing parties with different priorities, all of the candidates do agree on one thing, that increasing fundamentals such as water will bring more people and industry to grey. Um, it's a better life out here in the country, so we're just going to encourage people, come back out here to the country. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The federal government has committed to build a uni hub for Port Lincoln and the broader Eyre Peninsula. A regional university centre will be built under the umbrella of uni hub Spencer Gulf with the aim to offer a wide range of tertiary courses for students. The next phase for education on the Eyre Peninsula is on its way. The city of Port Lincoln has committed $200,000 for a new uni hub which is also backed by federal funding. Uh, council's commitment is $200,000 to upgrade the manse building which you see behind me uh, and that will be matched with $200,000 of federal funding as well. Uh, the operational funding to actually operate the centre over the four-year period will go directly to UniHub Spencer Golf. The location of the hub will be centred in the old manse building and will come with a range of refurbishments. Well, it's a great um, underutilised space that's owned by council as well, and there's, there's a few parts of this space as well. There's a, there's a larger building behind us here as well. However, it is still unclear how much federal funding will help in its operations. Council, meantime, remains confident in the endeavour, with the hub set to provide a wide range of courses to its students. UniHub Spencer Golf has an affiliation with a number of universities and they offer a number of supported learning environment courses uh, through their centres. Uh, but the centre will be made available to anyone studying online in any university across Australia. The new centre hoping to create more opportunities for people studying in the regions. Just a way that people can actually then participate in that sort of uh, education option uh, locally and stay in the region if they want to as well. So it's, a, it's great and it also fits in with so many industry options here as well. The mayors will be refurbished into the regional university centre over the next six months. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. Saypole has been left disappointed with the community after dishing out more than 500 speeding tickets last week. It was part of Operation Safe Speed, which was held statewide between last Thursday and Sunday, May 15. 521 speeding offences were detected in total, 
which is 74 more compared to the same operation in October last year. Police say the aim of Operation Safe Speed is to reduce harm caused by collisions on South Australian roads by deterring road users from speeding. So far this year, 13 lives have been lost on our roads, with speed listed as a contributing factor, which equates to 43% of all lives lost. Still to come tonight, funding on the way to help upgrade the facilities at a not-for-profit organisation in Broken Hill and giving back to those who give the most. Port Augusta Council thanks local volunteers as part of National Volunteer Week. Welcome back to 7 Spencer Golf News. Lifeline Broken Hill has received over $14,000 in funding. The organisation will use the money to upgrade the kitchen and meeting space at its Argent Street location. Both areas will be given a new lease on life to make for a better experience for those who come into the building as well as for staff. The funding comes from the latest round of the federal government's Stronger Communities program. Lifeline Broken Hill hope to have the renovations finished by September. Water New South Wales will be increasing releases from the Menindee Lake system towards a rate of 18 gigalitres per day. The release will come off the Weir 32 as inflows continue and rain drives more significant tributary flows in the northern basin. Joshua Mercer has the story. Water New South Wales has been increasing the amount of water flowing out of the lake by half a gigalitre since Saturday. For some context, one gigalitre is equal to one billion litres. At this stage, 18 gigalitres is expected to be reached by the end of the week and continuing for another fortnight. What may change this is ongoing rain events and corresponding flow projections in the northern basin. If or when that happens, the corporation will be required to review the rate of water being released from Menindee. The Menindee Lake system currently sits at 118% of capacity with a further 800 to 1200 gigalitres of inflow expected by the end of July. Now this is a marked increase on last week's estimated 600 to 900 gigalitres. Those numbers do not include the total flow generated by extensive heavy rainfall across the northern catchment of the Barwon Darling River in recent days. It is expected that the heavy rainfall will further increase the inflow projection. As a result, the Menindee Lakes may be further increased in coming weeks. It's all to manage storage levels in the lakes so that flooding in the Menindee Township is averted. Water New South Wales Executive Ronan Magaharan has previously said exceeding 18 gigalitres will risk impacting a number of households in the Menindee area. And it will not be considered to manage storage levels when other options are available. The company has been releasing water from the lakes down the Lower Darling continuously since September 2020. Over 5,000 gigalitres has entered the lake since February 2021. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. The Port Augusta City Council has hosted its hard-working volunteers today as part of National Volunteers Week celebrations. The morning event comprising of an award presentation along with a light brunch and with those in attendance thanked for their contribution to the community. Awards handed over to some of the community's most deserving. <laughs> Port Augusta's volunteers thanked by the Mayor and Council staff today for helping make the city a nicer place to live. It's very important we have volunteers and people with big hearts uh, that they help people we need. Such a wonderful city to live in and I've really enjoyed visiting all the various um, volunteer jobs that I've done. Uh, probably too many to mention. This year it was Shirley Mundy who was awarded the Premier Certificate of Recognition for Outstanding Volunteer Service. Well to think that there's a brand new Premier that's going to give me an award, I think that's lovely. Volunteers from the Lions, Emergency Services, Meals on Wheels and Civic Library today honoured for their commitments. You help a lot of people and like I said in there, um, people that help people smile, and people smile feel good and when people feel good it, it shares throughout the whole group. Some of them are only an hour or two but there's, there's always a commitment and um, it helps you get up in the morning too. 
After the presentation of certificates, volunteers were treated to a colourful brunch spread. To all those who couldn't make it today, you know, you're recognised today and, um, you know, we appreciate what you do. Edwin McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Beyond Devastated, why South Australia's newest music tour has been forced to pull the pin. And Broken Hill netballers wear pink and raise money for a worthy cause. Welcome back to 7 Spencer Golf News. Bookworms will be pleased to know that Port Pirie Regional Library's mega sale is currently underway. And while you're there, why not check out the display of historical maps and photos, all taken in Port Pirie, put together for History Month. Port Pirie Regional Library is the place to get a book at a bargain price. For the next two weeks, the library is selling books rather than hiring them out with some paper books priced as lost 50 cents. Quite a variety of books and uh, DVDs and music CDs for sale, um, varying genres from westerns, crime, romance through to non-fiction titles. The mega book sale takes place twice a year and is a great opportunity to add to your book collection. It's like everyone to be able to afford to come in and purchase some books for themselves and their families. The library staff understand that purchasing new books can be expensive and a deterrence for some people, which is why the premise of libraries is so appealing in the first place. Reading is um, very, very important from a very, very young age, sets up a routine uh, and it sets you up for all facets of life. While you're there, be sure to check out the display celebrating History Month and South Australia's History Festival. I've put up a display and we've got a lot of local history books out, um, both for Port Pirie and surrounding areas. History Month is an opportunity to be a tourist in your own town and discover secrets of the past. We have a um, booklet that you can come and pick up for free at the library which has all of the different events happening around the state and the dates and times that they're happening. The Port Pirie Regional Library has events happening right throughout the year, so be sure to follow them on their social media pages. Annabelle Francis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Today, organisers of the upcoming 500 Miles of Music Tour announced the event will be postponed to 2023. The decision was made to pull the pin on the travelling concert due to not enough pre-sale tickets being sold. Organisers say pre-sale tickets are an insurance for any event and as a small business, they were forced to make the tough call when it, they found it to not be financially viable. Despite this cancellation, organisers say their two bigger concerts, Rock the Rangers and Cleave Harvest Music Fest, will go ahead later in the year. Broken Hill Netball Association held its annual pink round last night, raising money for breast cancer research. The fundraiser, which is normally held in October, was brought forward due to the upgrades happening at E.P. O'Neill's sporting precinct later this year. Broken Hill Netballers getting into the spirit of pink round to raise money for a good cause. The round happening earlier than normal. So we may not have a secondary season this season, this year, so we brought it forward so we can still celebrate all the kids and raise money for breast cancer awareness. The association has moved more of its fundraising rounds forward to not clash with the upgrades. Last week, the league held its drink driving awareness round and next week they'll be raising money for the Salvation Army. So we do... Um have particular rounds that are of significance um, so this is obviously one of our major fundraising rounds so over the years I think we average about anywhere between 700 to 900 dollars. Players wearing as much pink as they could without getting opponents mixed up as their teammates. There is one item of clothing that sticks out every year during the round. Uh, so this year and especially over the last year a uh, few years we have seen and are still seeing a lot of pink tutus. It wasn't just the tutus that graced the netball courts during the round. A number of players opted for coloured zinc cream to show their support. I do actually feel sorry for some of the parents because when they get home getting that pink zinc cream off their kid's face, I'm glad that's not me. For next week's Salvation Army fundraising round, here is what people can expect. They will have donation tins around here, obviously, 
all the whiz bang of the pink that we've got but next week's going to be red so um, awareness is a huge thing for a lot of our fundraisers and hopefully I think we do that well. Game start at 5pm next Tuesday evening if you'd like to come along and show your support. No tutus required. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We take a look at how much Spencer Golf locals are forking out at the Bowser and we'll have the Wednesday Weather Watch with Alex Sykes. Welcome back to 7 Spencer Golf News. Petrol stations across the regions have seen a spike in prices in the past few weeks. In response, the state government will up its petrol station spot inspections across the Spencer Gulf, fining servos that are not complying with the real-time petrol pricing. Our reporter Henry Millick brings you this week's Fuel Watch. Just when motorists thought the cost of fuel was on the decline, recent data indicates yet another price increase. Due to global conflicts, experts worry that inflation will continue to affect the commuters. Starting things off with the price of unleaded, and it's troubling signs for those fueling up in the regions. In Port Lincoln, the price of fuel has jumped up by five cents to one dollar ninety. Wyala unleaded facing similar cost, paying one dollar eighty eight per litre. Those in Port Augusta forking out the most for unleaded this week, paying one dollar ninety one a litre. For Kadena and Broken Hill, locals are paying an extra six cents per litre compared to last week around $1.82. Better signs for those living or travelling to the city, with the price of fuel dropping by almost 23 cents. Unleaded can now be bought for just $1.76 a litre in Adelaide. Moving on to diesel prices now. And there isn't much improvement, with a major price increase across the region. Port Lincoln taking out the highest average price of diesel this week, paying $2.14. That's a seven cent jump from last week's price. For people traveling through Wyala, Port Augusta, Port Pirie or Broken Hill, commuters can expect to pay around $2.12 a litre. Kadena also seeing an increase, now paying $2.08 for every litre in the tank. Once again, if you're heading over to Adelaide, you can expect slightly cheaper diesel, now sitting $2.06 per litre. Auto gas users still the big winners, with price on the decline or holding steady. Poor Lincoln auto gas prices are the highest in the region, sitting at $1.32 a litre. Better news in Port Piri, Kadena and Broken Hill, with prices falling ever so slightly by around $0.02 cents a litre. Adelaide once again has the cheapest gas at $1.02 a litre. Well, that's about it for this week. Please remember these are just the regional averages and these prices don't reflect any particular outlet. If you've seen fuel cheaper, please let us know on our Facebook page. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather with Alex Sykes. Alex, good conditions for a democracy sausage on Saturday. That's right, Maddie. Not a drop of rain when we head to the polls. And there are some nice conditions in the lead up to the federal election as well. To today's conditions first, at 3 pm, Port Augusta was partly cloudy at 19. It was mostly sunny in Clare and 17. And over the border at Broken Hill, it was 16 degrees. Looking further out across the region now, Wala and Kadena were both 17. Port Lincoln was 18. Port Puri was 20. Woodna was mostly sunny and 20 degrees. Kadena and Cleve were both partly cloudy and 17 degrees. Cooper Petey got to a high of 18 and our friends in Adelaide got to a max of 17. Taking a look at the satellite image now, cloud sweeping in the northwest is bringing areas of rain in the odd isolated storm. Cloud in the far southeast is not bringing any rain. A marine wind warning also remains current for South Australia. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Southwesterly winds 10 to 15 knots, seas below 1 metre and south to southwesterly swell 1 to 3 metres. Those mainly fine conditions continue. Port Lincoln and Cleve both set to reach a top of 18. Woodna a max of 20. While at 18, Port Augusta 20 and Kadena is set to reach a max of 19 degrees. Port Piri to top 20. Clare will have the region's low reaching just 15 degrees and Broken Hill is set to reach a max of 16. Taking a look further through the week now, partly cloudy conditions again across the region on 
Friday. Temperatures mainly in the mid to high teens, a max of 24 Cooper Pedy, Port Augusta, Woodna and Port Piri. A look at that all important weekend forecast now. Sunny for Cooper Pedy and Woodna on Saturday, partly cloudy across the rest of the region. Temperatures across most centres in the high teens to low 20s and across the border, Broken Hill will just get to a high of 14 degrees. Partly cloudy across the region on Sunday, temperatures to sit in the mid to high 20s. Port Augusta and Port Pirie both reach a max of 24. Broken Hill will again have the region's low, getting to just a max of 18 degrees. So Maddie, some nice conditions there before we start heading into the winter months. And that's all the weather for me for tonight. I'll see you soon with an update. It's back to you. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the news this Wednesday. I'm Madeline Kerr. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates a little later. But until then, enjoy your evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.